Just a few hours ago, police here at Midtown South arrested Sean Carter, better known as Jay-Z. Witnesses say that Jay-Z allegedly plunged a knife into Rivera's stomach and smashed a bottle over his brother's head before running out of the club. I saw him laying on the ground and just, you know, like shouting like Jay-Z stabbed me. And I'm like, what? Like, Was Jay-Z the one that actually stabbed you? Um, Jay-Z has been a crook for a long time. He grew up in a toxic environment, and at the age of 12, he shot his own brother. Into adulthood, he got into even more trouble. This is a dangerous man, and the truth needs to be told. So let's get into it. Recently, we spoke about Jay-Z and Beyonce's toxic relationship, but Jay-Z himself has a dark past, and today we're going to go through all of the trouble he's been in. To start off, we'll talk about the night that he stabbed someone named Lance Un Rivera, and it seems like Jay-Z tried to ruin this guy's career. He was a business partner of the Notorious B.I.G. and was stabbed in the stomach and shoulder back in December 1999. The stabbing is alleged to have occurred after Jay-Z confronted Lance over reports that he had leaked his third studio album. And you guys know leaking music is a big deal. These artists spend months making these albums, and then once they're leaked, they lose a lot of the profit. Jay-Z was charged for the attack and turned himself into the police the following day. After initially pleading not guilty and denying any wrongdoing, in October 2001, he pleaded guilty to third-degree assault and was sentenced to three years probation. Here's a scan of Jay-Z's mugshot profile and as you can see that is Jay-Z in the mugshot and he doesn't look happy. For Rosanna, just a few hours ago, police here at Midtown South arrested Sean Carter, better known as Jay-Z. The rap star voluntarily turned himself in here at the precinct earlier this evening. Now Carter is being held here in connection with that stabbing fight that erupted at the Kit Kat Club last night. So this all went down at the Kit Kat Club, which is no longer around, but it was the hot spot in New York, and it became a crime scene. Once inside, he had a confrontation with record producer Lance Rivera. Cops say the argument heated up during a party celebrating a new release by rapper Q-Tip. Jay-Z and his crew surrounded the 33-year-old Rivera and his 29-year-old brother Corey. Witnesses say that Jay-Z allegedly plunged a knife into Rivera's stomach and smashed a bottle over his brother's head before running out of the club. So everybody at the scene clearly knew that Jay-Z was involved. And he was even quoted in court saying, I stabbed Lance Rivera. Jay-Z did end up turning himself in. He had a bail of $50,000, which he was able to pay. So he got out a few hours later. A press conference with his lawyers labeled Jay-Z as an innocent man. Quote, to think that this guy, who is as gentle as can be, has anything to do with this is crazy, end quote. And I don't know what's going on with Lance, but he actually came out and stated that Jay-Z, in fact, did not stab him. Lance recalls that night and claims that he was surrounded by 10 knives, a bunch of guys with all these knives in the club. The reporter asked him, was Jay-Z the one who stabbed you? He laughs before responding, no, Jay-Z was not the guy that actually stabbed me that night. The executive clarifies that they did have a conversation right before getting hit in the head with a champagne bottle, so it probably was one of Jay-Z's people. Was Jay-Z the one that actually stabbed you? Um, <laughs> for the, no, Jay-Z was not the guy who actually stabbed me that night. But Jay-Z was there when you got stabbed? Um, was yeah. actually in front of you when you got stabbed? Um, it was like, yeah, me and Jay-Z had a conversation while, you know, um, right before I got hit in the head with a champagne bottle and it was a brief conversation and I was looking at him like, what are you talking about? And you know you the money up right now. So Lance is claiming that Jay-Z was, in fact, not the guy that stabbed him. But part of me believes that maybe this, if, I mean, if, if Jay-Z stabbed him, like, wouldn't you listen to anything that he says if you survive? I feel like if he got stabbed by this guy and he threatens him that he'll make it a lot worse if he blames Jay-Z, then he probably will go with the story that, you know, Jay-Z didn't do it. But I kind of believe that he did, especially because there was a witness who claims that when Lance was on the ground, he kept repeating that Jay-Z had stabbed him. Rapper packs, it was uh, every rapper probably in New York City and beyond was in there, including Jay. I saw Jay coming out 
scowling, crazy look on his face. In the back, like towards where the bar area was, I saw him laying on the ground and just, you know, like shouting, like Jay-Z stabbed me. And I'm like, what? Like, what is he saying right now? I'm with two of my homegirls and he's like, Jay-Z stabbed me, Jay-Z stabbed me. So I'm like, yo, stop saying that. Like, I'm like trying to get him to chill. So if this witness says, you know what, you probably shouldn't be saying that, she probably knows how dangerous Jay-Z can be. And it seems like he's been a little bit messy in his business practices as well. At one point, contractors claimed that Jay-Z passed bad checks and owes them $40,000. Back in 2003, reports claimed that two companies filed separate lawsuits against Jay-Z's nightclub for a total of $46,000 in unpaid bills. One company was hired to create the tables, 30 custom tables, and they cost $18,000, but he only put $5,000 down. That lawsuit was settled for $8,000 later that year in November. I'm not entirely sure why he didn't get the rest of his money, but he was able to at least get the $8,000 plus the $5,000 that he was initially paid. Jay-Z is a shark in the legal world, so he did try to counter sue, and he claimed that the tables weren't ready in time, so they weren't going to pay the full price, and that's ultimately why they're able to negotiate like $8,000, because I guess maybe the tables weren't ready, but it doesn't really outlined whether that's the truth or not or whether the rest of the club was even ready in June. Now let's take it way back to when Jay-Z wasn't Jay-Z, when he was 12 years old and he admitted to shooting his brother. When Jay-Z was 12 years old, he said he admitted to shooting his brother Eric after he stole one of the rapper's rings. Quote, how did he get the gun? Well, I went to someone's crib, someone's house and got it, he explained. It was easy to acquire the firearm because guns were everywhere. You didn't have to go far to get one, just everywhere. After shooting his brother, he believed he was going to jail, but his siblings refused to press charges and ended up apologizing to his brother because he was a crack addict. The girl in the neighborhood had bought Jay a ring, which is what eventually led to him shooting his own brother. Jay's older brother had allegedly been stealing from the family to fund his crack addiction, and he ended up taking Jay's ring too. When Jay confronted him about it, his brother took too long to give an explanation for the missing ring. And that's when Jay grabbed his gun and told his brother to step outside. When he did, Jay closed his eyes and let off a shot, hitting his brother in the shoulder. So clearly there is a dysfunctional home here if his older brother is stealing from the family and he's shooting him at 12 years old. I feel pretty sad hearing stories like these because Jay-Z didn't have a chance to grow up in a healthy environment with this kind of dysfunction. Jay-Z opened up in an interview with The Guardian about his upbringing. He claims he wasn't born violent, but that he grew up having to take care of himself, which put him in constant survival mode. And he's actually rapped about his childhood in his music. Like, the time he shot his brother. Quote, just smile. My big brother's trying to make me tougher. As we grew, fussing and fighting continued. I plundered through your stuff and snuck your clothes to school. Got intense, real intense as we got older. Never believed it would lead to popping one in your shoulder. Where are my rings? You knew you had it because you took too long, too long to answer. Huffing and puffing, gun in my hand, I told you to step outside. Hoping you'd say no, you would hurt my pride. Made our way down the steps. Maybe you thought it was just a threat or maybe your life was just too crazy and you were begging for death Ooh! because jay-z grew up in constant survival mode he has had some violent interactions one back in 1999 he was caught striking a young female fan backstage the rapper appears to slap and then push the young woman in front of him as he walks down the hallway with his people We've seen this time and time again where celebrities defend themselves in these situations, which you'd hope they have bodyguards, but I mean, we see Cardi B throwing the microphone, we see other celebrities taking phones and throwing them, so I get why they get frustrated, but you cannot get physical because there's so much you're risking at this point. They have a celebrity, they have money, people can easily sue you for just about anything. A spokeswoman for the rapper says the footage was taken out of context. Quote, the person in that video is someone who he has worked with for years, and they are very close and for it to be exerted that way is an insult so um it seems like it was supposed to be a friendly thing but that footage didn't seem too friendly to me
Now let's talk about some of Jay-Z's love children, because when he's not pushing women around, he's getting them pregnant. And at one point, I guess he paid $2.5 million for a woman to disappear with his baby. I think we've actually talked about Jay-Z's children before. There's like one person who's spoken out claiming that they are Jay-Z's son, and I believe him. Jay-Z had actually hooked up with an adult film star named Jasmine Cashmere. Hmm. And then a lot of people found out that she was pregnant with his baby. She ended up having the baby, but they made a public statement saying that they were not hooking up and that she was not, in fact, pregnant by Jay-Z's baby. Interestingly enough, a friend tipped off the news that Jay-Z had paid Jasmine $2.5 million to disappear and that she had actually bought a new house around this time. Jasmine and her friends who had spread the rumors haven't bothered Jay-Z since the alleged payout. So is that a coincidence? Probably not. There's also another rumor that Jay-Z has a baby with a model named Chanel Scott, who is from Trinidad. Back in 2002, Jay-Z had an open relationship with Chanel while she was betrothed by another man. Oh, interesting. It was assumed that her child was her boyfriend's, but as her son grew up, the man rejected him as his own because the boy didn't look like him. After a paternity test confirmed that Jay is the father, he stepped up and took responsibility. He bought Chanel and his son a nice home in Trinidad and gave them $1 million. He also pays child support. So shoot, Beyonce probably knows about this one. Jay and Chanel are still friends who keep in contact. She's publicly stated that Jay is a good father and has a lot of interest in his boy. One of Chanel's family friends was quoted saying, it was a big old mess at one time, but I think once they resolved the issue of fatherhood and of paternity, things started to level off. There were also allegations that Jay-Z fathered a child with model Chanel Scott. A man named Gerald Andrews, who was assumed to be the child's father, said that a DNA test had shown that his son Malik Saeed was not his son and that Jay-Z is the father. However, representatives for Jay-Z denied the allegations once again, saying, there is no truth to these ridiculous rumors. People should be ashamed of using this kind of story and exploiting a child for publicity and ratings. Gerald did retract the allegations, but there's no way to tell if he was paid to take back his words. So there's two already, but there's another one. And actually one of Jay-Z's former friends claims that he has a secret adult daughter who lives in a house that he pays for. He alleges that his adult daughter resides in a home that Jay-Z purchased for her in Cambridge, Maryland, and that he pays her bills, but allegedly doesn't allow her to put pictures of him around her house as part of their deal. And one of Jay's old friends, Oshino, actually confirmed the allegations and said in 2022 that Jay-Z purchased a house for Letitia in Cambridge, Maryland, and that he paid her bills, but allegedly doesn't allow her to put pictures of him around the house as a part of their deal. It's kind of bizarre that he has that agreement with her, but I guess it's because he wants to try to keep her on the down low, even though that didn't last for long. Because Letitia actually came out and claimed that she is Jay-Z's secret daughter, and she's got DNA proof to support her claims. I guess Jay-Z used to date Lisa, her mother, back in 1990, and you've got to admit that Jay-Z and Beyonce are probably really unhappy that Letitia is out here talking about him. She was quoted saying, I've been quiet for far too long. Join Join me as I tell you my story of living in the shadows of being Jay-Z's daughter in a city where everyone knew he was my father. There's no way he can deny anything, especially when there were people there that knew him. Apparently, Letitia was born in 1990 after her mother Lisa had been introduced to Jay-Z through Lisa's sister, and the two immediately began a romantic relationship. The sister even wrote about the encounter on Facebook. I know the story from start to finish. I hooked your mother and father up years ago. Jay-Z asked me who she was when I lived on 500 side Greenwood Avenue. We chilled in that apartment so many times. So you really can't trust anyone out here because a lot of people are spilling, you know, Jay-Z's business, but also as they should, because he shouldn't be able to operate in secrecy and hurt other people. And some people wonder if Beyonce stands for this, but at one point their former bodyguard came out and claimed that Jay-Z was like feeding Beyonce drugs to control her. Holy nobody knows. But I say it, man. Yeah, Beyonce's on drugs. She been on them for a long time. And you keep her that way. Y'all wish it what you wish it. To stay on top. 
Of course, that bodyguard went viral, and honestly, I would be worried about his safety. Because you know that these bodyguards see a lot. And days after his comments on TikTok went viral, a commentator named Jaguar Wright summoned the courage to call Jay-Z a monster who keeps Beyonce drugged to control her. She was quoted saying, I've waited a long time to see if he would grow a conscious, and the more drugs he pumps down his wife's throat to keep her together. Y'all talking about free Britney. Y'all need to be doing a, a campaign that say free Beyonce. Uh, Beyonce is free. She is a prisoner in a gilded cage and she's watched 24 hours a day. Wife, she is his employee. So if Beyonce is in trouble, we're wishing the best for her. I actually saw her in Vegas and she was a great performer. I saw her and Adele and I don't know who I prefer more. I don't even want to answer that out here, but and they were great. They were very different. You know, Adele was very like intimate and close to everyone. And, you know, a few times she like redid her songs while, you know, Beyonce was perfect and a lot of dancers and her daughter was dancing. She had her out there working. But I want to hear what you guys think about Jay-Z's past. There's a lot of baggage there, a lot of baggage for Beyonce to deal with but i mean they've been together for so long she probably knows all of his deepest and darkest secrets and maybe that's what brings them together anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you in a new one soon bye guys